This week on Vaticano, the Holy See appeals for peace in the Holy Land ahead of a possible Israeli action to annex Palestinian territories. Learn with us about the situation of Christians in the Middle East from the head of the order that protects them. And join us on a pre-pandemic pilgrimage to the biblical lands. For this and more, Vaticano starts now. Holy See Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin met with the ambassadors of the United States and Israel to the Holy See on June the 30th, ahead of a possible Israeli action to annex Palestinian territories. The Holy See Press Office confirmed this meeting on July the 1st. The press release says the Holy See reiterated that Israel and the State of Palestine have the right to exist and to live in peace and security within internationally recognized borders. At the beginning of his pontificate, Pope Francis prayed for peace in the Holy Land together with the Israeli and Palestinian leaders on June the 8th, 2014. He wished them to take courage to say yes to encounter and no to conflict. Sì alla sincerità e no alla doppiezza. Per tutto questo ci vuole coraggio, grande forza di animo. July the 1st was a possible start date for annexation, but no action was taken. There was no agreement with the United States to move forward. President Donald Trump's proposal for peace calls for the creation of a Palestinian state, but gives Israel sovereignty over 30% of the West Bank. The Palestinians reject this plan. On May the 20th, the Holy See reaffirmed its support for a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine, and respect for the borders internationally recognized before 1967. The Holy See's communique expresses hope that the Israelis and Palestinians will be able to directly negotiate an agreement with the help of the international community that will lead to peace, so that peace may finally reign in the Holy Land, so beloved by Jews and Christians and Muslims. The pandemic has affected the economic situation of the Vatican City due to the closure of the Vatican Museums for almost three months, potentially leaving the Vatican City with a deficit at the end of the year. The economic burden is felt in many parts of the world, and especially the places where tourism is one of the main sources of income. It has particularly affected Christians in the Holy Land. The Grand Master of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre, Cardinal Fernando Filoni, has invited Catholics to support families and schools in the Holy Land affected by the coronavirus crisis. the order which has the responsibility good part to contribute to the life of the church in the Holy Land already settle a, a fund for needs, general needs. But because uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 created a lot of difficulties which were not uh, viewed in the previously, and uh, taking into consideration that many members ask what we can do still for the Holy Land, we open a fund. And uh, those who would like uh, generously to participate at uh, this uh, supplementary request of money for the help of the families there, this fund is providing this opportunity. Of course, it depends by generosity of of those who would like to participate. The primary duty of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre is to help the Church and Christians in the Holy Land to develop and thrive. It has an estimated 30,000 members in 40 countries worldwide who are committed to this cause. Okay, 
is an act of generosity, an act of charity to the families which had no other income. And uh, we know that the Christian families sometimes are poor. So uh, answering to, uh, to them, it's a question also of uh, sharing with them their concern and the taking on our shoulder also a little bit of this heavy situation. The fund will also provide help for students at church-run schools and universities. We have almost 40 schools, secondary schools, we have a university too. In these schools, of course, everything was closed, blocked, but you have to pay uh, the teachers and those who are uh, linked to the schools. The new fund will enable 38 institutions in the Palestinian territories and Jordan with more than 1,300 staff and 15,000 students to keep operating. Before leading the Order of the Holy Sepulchre, Cardinal Filoni led the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples from 2011 to 2019. He specified that the fund will also help other religious groups. I want to say that those who are benefiting, especially in the schools, are not only Catholic or Christians, because children in the schools are co-educated with also other uh, communities, Muslim, Hebrews, and so on, anyhow. So in some way, we have also an open vision, not only for the Catholics, especially for them, but not only, and we are glad to share with them in this difficult, mo this difficult moment to share with them our generosity. The Cardinal hopes that the region will avoid the second wave of COVID-19 and that pilgrimages to the Holy Land will resume soon. After the break, join us on a virtual pilgrimage to the Holy Land, one of the last international pilgrimages that took place before the lockdown. Stay with us. In my own life, I've been wandering for a while. And to get to see where Jesus actually wandered, and to see the landscape, and to see the actual dryness, and to literally be looking at the valley of the shadow of death, and see that every person that God has loved in the scriptures, in the, New, in the Old Testament, in the New, He sent them into a desert. Evangelization is all about kind of making faith real for people. It's about bringing people to a real physical encounter with Christ. It's all about challenging them. And it really presents Christ in a very real and deep way. hands and asking him to accompany us today. So that's what we're going to be doing every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, the very first day, Father had this great idea that we are going to hike Mount Tabor. It was a, a great moment to get to know everyone because we were still very fresh off the boat, so to speak. Um, we don't need to go back to my team all day. <laughs> getting to know everyone in this kind of quirky environment, but also recognizing that Christ and the apostles would have done something very similar on their way to the top for the transfiguration. So it was a really fantastic way to start the week off all together. He's calling us to this like deep intimacy with him and you know we can go to all of these places and see these beautiful sites and see where he was and I think when I was coming I was so excited to see the places but to realize that he wants like to be there with you in this encounter and that really I think that's just really struck me. I feel like right now in, in my life, there's a lot of transition. Um, and I actually see with a lot of other people on the trip, there's a lot of transition and uncertainties. And I really feel identified with that Peter who's called by Jesus out of the boat onto the water to, to walk in trust. So it's been a learning of an opening of my heart to, to let the Lord call me out and to, to take those first steps. Being able to look out over the Sea of Galilee and see the hills Jesus would have seen and to walk where Jesus would have walked just brought the gospel to life and made it less of a, a story and more of a real experience. utilizes the network that's here at his disposal. This, this sea or this lake, and he bounces around and he hits all these little villages and, and communities that we've seen, Mount of Beatitudes, Capernaum. He's networking and he's touching people one day at a time. And, and who does he use to build his church? He uses these poor fishermen. Uh, so I guess the lesson is, Jesus changed the world with the smallest of networks, and, and we as, as young professionals, young adults, um, actually have vastly larger networks, so we should uh, absolutely utilize it and find those salt of the earth, light of the world people, and let's change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Nicola. Where are you from, Nicola? Uh, Palestine. Palestine, all right. We have a renewal of vows. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. For better or for worse, for all the days of it. Love you.
delicious vino to complete the meal. You know, you're eating together, you're having community together, you're laughing together. It was just really beautiful, it was really authentic. In a few moments, we'll be back with more on Vaticano. If you look, you see the angel appearing to uh, Our Lady, and you see the second, what do you see, verbum, you know, the word, caro, facto, me habite in nobis, the word become flesh and dwelt amongst us. And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. A lot of times we stick with the fiat, like this is so amazing because Mary said yes, and she did say yes, and that's the most important part. But if you look at the gospel, I mean, it's kind of complicated. I mean, Mary obviously was very faith-filled, was very, you know, wanted to do what God wanted. But even her, like, Zachariah asks a question to God, and he's like, look, you can't talk for like the next three months. No, Mary is still asking questions. She's like, yeah, but how's this supposed to work? wanted the main subject to be repentance repentance that's the most important and that's why they emphasized that Peter repented and he became the leader of the church we were at the dungeon where Christ was kept overnight and I've always had a special love of Holy Thursday and just having that time to really think about Christ's upcoming passion You feel it here, and, and even if you don't have faith, you understand the man of Jesus. And that understanding of the humanity, I think, opens your heart to understanding him as the Son of God. You see the Dom Anastasis, resurrection, and the tomb is empty. Jesus is risen, and that's the center of our faith.
I thought coming here was the pilgrimage, uh, and it's not. Going home is the pilgrimage. Going into the rest of my life as a faithful Catholic, building on the experiences I have had here is the real pilgrimage, and that's what I'm really excited for. Everybody else has been excited or afraid to go home, uh, and I'm excited to keep going on the real pilgrimage.